Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Flying in Space with Planet Head. This should be part two of creating a very, 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 very basic um, tackle ship. If you, I'm sorry, Aura, um, a very basic uh, tackle ship. If you want to try to fleet up to get started with fleeting up. Um, I am currently on my way to the system of Wrens so that um, I can do a quick f purchase and fit of a tackle ship. Um, and another thing that to point out um, or show you guys something positive that happened today. Um, but uh, one thing, I, every once in a while I have a problem with trying to figure out how to uh, start a video, so I'll try to keep, sorry Aura, um, <laughs> try to keep this a little bit brief. Um, literally, uh, I don't know how to start the videos, and then right before I made, started making this video tonight, I got a message with, on one of the comments um, from a person named Northy, uh, literally like 45 minutes ago, and I was about to reply to him, and I thought I would just drop it off here because it's kind of cool. Um, he said, I first joined EVE Online when it was in beta. I remember it being a big deal if over 300, had 300 people on the server. Um, uh, it was my go-to game for about eight years. EVE sucks you in and it becomes a second job. It's not all bad. I still have some RL friends I met on EVE Online. It's been at least five years since I last logged in. I just don't have the time anymore. Um, and what was that? Did I get something? Okay, cool. Um, and I 100% agree with Northy. Uh, I am nowhere near um, the age. I did not start when uh, they did. Um, appreciate the comment. Um, and I'm actually, but uh, I totally understand. I remember when I played ten, eight or 10 years ago, I never really want to look that up because it makes me feel old. Um, I can date it by figuring out my old character's login. Um, but, uh, I wanted to say, I totally understand whenever I used to play, I get totally focused in on making it my second life, my second thing that I did, even my first life, I think at times. Um, and I was playing a lot. As you guys can probably tell, I don't play nearly as much as I used to. I, I took about an eight-year hiatus with a few, like, retries real quick when they went with alpha characters. Um, I tried that out a little bit really briefly, a couple other things. Uh, but when COVID hit and you were stuck in your house, I decided I would really want to try it again. So... But I went at it with a different mindset, and I don't know if this would help Northy or anybody else that's out there. Um, even before I started making videos, I decided I only wanted to play when I want to play. And that sounds simple, but it's true. As soon as it became a job or something like that, a second job, like Northy says, and everybody says that, do you play EVE online? No, I've already got a second job. That's a running joke. I decided I refused to do that, um, and it's why I kind of do things the way I do, and if this helps anybody like me out there, if I don't want to play, I don't play. Um, I have so many other things in my life um, that I'm trying to do. Um, I'm actually studying some Spanish poorly. I work about 50 hours a week. I'm working on my house. I want to travel, um, but what has happened over the last six to eight months has been a progression of Eve where it's not just Eve but making the videos and conversing with people over the discord channel or in here or getting feedback from people where Eve has actually been a draw for me where I want to play I want to play I don't feel the need to play um, and every single day I am looking forward to jumping in and sometimes it's only for 30 minutes um, sometimes it's for a couple of hours. I can't play for more than like a long amount of time, but so that's what, uh, to not beat around the bush. That's what I kind of try to make these videos about. 
Um, it isn't about making a huge empire. They aren't instructional videos. It's just pointing out things that I find fun that maybe somebody can jump in and do quickly or fit into their like, game style or something like that. I.e., I'm not really doing these uh, two videos on about tackling as instructional videos because there are a ton of videos out there that are really good at that. It's more so saying, hey, this interested me. Maybe it might interest you and make the game more fun for you. So, uh, Northy, thanks so much for the comment there. It kind of gave me a segue in today's video. <laughs> uh, if you watched yesterday's video, part one of tackling, um, let me just keep jumping here. Uh, I basically went to the website, um, Brave, uh, the Brave Collective's website. I'll just pull it up here. And normally I don't do this, but it was so well written and easy to do. I went through the first part of the description of tackling, what types of ships you might want to have, and the navigation, and kind of did my own little spin on it. But I used a lot of their wording here. Um, what I'd like to do today is just go through the modules. I'll actually set up one of these um, frigate fits. They're very, very simple that somebody can jump into right away. And then maybe get into the method of tackling um, and go through that. Maybe that might be able to help some people. So I'm going to pull that down to my second screen here. Do, do, do. And oh, we are in Rens. Sweet. So uh, the other, before I get into that, the other really positive thing today is, and I don't want to say his name, but um, somebody watched my prior video and saw that I, uh, I was went through the markets and I was using the scanned, rig, uh, scanned um, the scanned down relic sites to get salvage so that I can then use rigs to build rigs and then sell them on, on the market. I got a contract today. Nobody sent me an email. Uh, nobody said, hey, here's this for you. They just sent me a contract of some blueprints. I haven't even had the time to open it. I looked at it. I was like, this is freaking awesome. So thank you so much for that. Um, I appreciate it. And um, so let's get to it. And I will get back to you. I still haven't accepted the contract. It's kind of funny. That's why I've kind of flown to Rens here. Um, but I uh, really appreciate that, and I will use it to the best of my ability. Uh, you do not have to do that. I am, but okay. So, to tackling. Do do do. A little bit of coffee to get into this. Okay, so a lot of this I might read word for word and then throw my own stuff. I kind of do this when I'm doing training classes at work. Um, next week I'm bringing on three new hires for uh, three new trainers or um, class classroom people, and I'm going to have to run them through something similar to this at my job. And I like to use what I call network stuff and then throw my own stuff into it, which gives people more of a why and a spiel. But I do it a lot of off the cuff. So let's see what we've got here. So modules. If you haven't watched the video before, watch this. So modules. When fitting a fitting to fly tackle, so a tackle ship, uh, you have three goals to keep in mind. Oh, this I remember reading this. This is really good. So there's three uh, really important things you want to keep focused on. And I, I think they put them in the right order here. Number one, your job is to disrupt the target's warp. So you're going to you're gonna stop them from being able to warp away. The second job is to close rapidly on the target and prevent it from prop modding away. So you've locked it down, but maybe it's got a prop mod that it can get away from you and get that, that tackle off. Um, so you got to get in close to hold it down. And the third one is to be able to survive their counter fire. So how do you do that? Either armor tank, shield tank, or speed tank. Try to stay alive. Um, the th and it kind of goes in order of abilities. Um, anyone can tackle somebody, but can they stay within range? And then can they stay alive is even harder than staying within range because once you get in range, it's like, hey. So, um, so disrupting the target's warp is done 
with one of too much. I'm, why am I not pulling this up here? I want to keep this up. I'm going to do a fit of the bottom ones here just to show you guys, but I might as well put it here so you, you can read along with me. Disrupting a target's warp is done with one of two modules, the warp disruptor, the warp scrambler. So that is number one here, disrupting the warp. It's done with either a disruptor or a scrambler. I talked about that in the last video. Now this is very important. And um, I really liked how they said this. Uh, warp disruptors are long ranged and have a warp core disabling strength of one. Warp scramblers have a shorter range, but have a warp core disabling strength of two and can also disable micro warp drives, um, even if the target has enough warp strength to escape. So um, basically disruptors are longer range, but uh, they don't hold them down as much. Whereas uh, um, the uh, warp scramblers are shorter range um, and are able to hold them down harder, um, but it puts you at more at risk. Important. Uh, closing uh, rapidly with the target can be assisted by a variety of modules. And this is where it comes into here and here, your micro warp drive frigate and your afterburner frigate, which one do you want to choose? Almost all tacklers are equipped with one of the types of propulsion, whether it be afterburner or micro warp drive, in order to quickly close the gap. Uh, micro warp drives offer a larger speed boost relative to afterburners, but have a downside of increasing the ship's signature radius, making it easier to hit. So in other words, and if you don't know this, um, just maybe this is helpful, uh, micro warp drives increase your speed by uh, five times, um, but also increase your signature radius. So it's easier for you to be targeted by the guy that who you are or anyone that's out there. So they can do their countermeasures um, to try to hit you faster, um, whether it be hit you with drones, with guns, or do some sort of E-War or something like that. They can, they can target you faster and maybe hit you with, uh, have a better shot at hitting you. Whereas the afterburner, in general, doubles your speed, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but it doesn't increase your um, signature radius. So it might be a little bit harder for them to t hit you. But you, if they've got a micro warp drive and you've got an afterburner, you're not going to be able to catch them unless you get them real quick. So uh, afterwards, blah, 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 blah. There are a variety of low slot modules that can increase the ship speed as well. For example, blah, 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 blah. We won't bother with that. It, uh, overdrive injection. Thank you very much. You can read that. How you choose to attempt to survive a counter fire from a ship that you have tackled is usually dictated by whether you choose an afterburner or a micro warp drive. See, that is something that I never knew. And I was really happy to read this here. Um, so what they're saying is depending on what um, speed you're going at and what you're, how you're closing that distance will also affect how you're defending yourself. Um, and we'll get into it. So with an afterburner, it's generally better to uh, double down on speed modules. With a micro warp drive, you need to supply enough tank modules such as damage control, reinforced force bulkheads, that sort of thing. So in other words, with the afterburner, sensor signature radius has not um, has not gotten larger, it's harder for them to hit you. So what they're saying is to double down on that speed bonus and make yourself more agile and quick and try to make your signature radius smaller or harder to hit. Whereas since your micro warp drive has ballooned up your signature so much um, that you're not going to be able to mitigate that most likely. So why not uh, tank using either um, a, a shield defense or an armor defense, most likely an armor defense because most of your mid slots are going to be taken up with um, your tackling stuff that goes on. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this down here. Do, do, do. Bingo. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to purchase a frigate. Now, the ones that I was talking about yesterday, I wanted to go with the Condor. If you watch the video from yesterday, because it has uh, four mid slots and two low slots. 
versus some of the other ones who would go three and three. The four mid slots give me a little bit more of an option going on there. So we're going to go with the Condor. Um, let's see if I can buy one here in Rens. I'm assuming that I can. Um, so Condor in capitals because I'm yelling at the screen right now. There we go. Uh, and we're going to go ships and Condor. Thank you. And we got one for sale for 425000 I don't mind buying this because I'll get it blown up. Um, so buy this, buy one, and thank you. Now we have a Condor. Um, if you watch my fleet character series, I was able to set up any hull ability um, up to battle cruiser over a 15-day period. So I know that I can now fly uh, this ship um, that I just built. Bought, so I'm happy with that. Now, whether or not I can fit it, I have no idea. So, assemble my ship. There we go. And that's AF Prime's Condor. Should we name it something? If you guys can think of a name for my uh, my tackle frigate, um, let me know. Um, oh, man. Bait and tackle? I'm not a fisherman. I want to be one, but my brother is a was a professional bass fisherman um, years and years ago. He's still one of the best fishermen I've ever met. Uh, so uh, maybe I should name it after him. We'll think about it. He, he beat me up a lot when I was a kid, so um, we're not going to name our ship after him just yet. Uh, actually, we are. We're going to name it... Uh, because you got to have fun. David. Because that's his middle name, and he never went by it. So I never... Uh, David's Curse. Why not? I have no... No, that's stupid. Uh, David... David's Goliath? Hey, that's a kind of cool name. Okay. Rolls off the tongue. David's Goliath. So we've got our Condor. Let's get into it. Make active. Awesome, we got a condor. Now, I really have always liked the look of the condor. It's just pretty freaking cool looking ship. It's one of the first ships I played in 10 years ago. Um, cool, cool, cool. So remember I said we have the four slots there and the two slots there. Have I gotten any... Uh, oh man, yes, I have a skin for it. I always like to see if I've gotten a free skin. Did I do... I guess I did the... Uh, Whatchamacallit's the Project Discovery. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, wait. I think I have this on. Let's change my display graphics. I think I went with low to optimize. Let's optimize the settings. I want to see what it would really look like if it's any different. So we're going to go with quality. Apply. Good, good, good. I have no idea how long this video is going. Return to game. Oh, man, yeah. Okay. See, this is why I want a new computer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that does look a lot better. Sweet. All right. So, um, so remember I was saying earlier you get the four mid slots versus the two low slots. So, I'm going to go by uh, Brave's uh, fittings here. And... I want to go with an afterburner fit. Uh, why? Because I'm just so used to... I, I, I like the idea of speed tanking. I've always liked that idea. So, just to go through it here, uh, they've got a damage control in your low slot. Oh, wait. This is a little bit tough because I can only use two of the three of these. Why do I say that? Because I've only got two low slots and they have three low slots here. So... See, the overdrive, if I'm not mistaken, the overdrive injector system increases my speed, overall speed, whereas my nanofiber internal structure increases my agility, I think. Damage control just takes more damage. So here's the issue. The whole idea is for me not to get hit. If I get hit, I'm probably going to die anyway. So I'm thinking I this is going to be 
bad. I don't like it, but I'm going to probably not use the damage control and use the overdrive injector and the nanofiber and then do a warp disruptor, stasis web of fire, 1MN, afterburner. And then that'll give me a fourth slot in the mid slot. What I want to use it for, I'm not 100% sure yet. So um, we'll go ahead and lower this down here. And I'm going to pull up my stats here just to show you that maybe they change as I do them. So let's see here. We're going to go in and, well, I can simulate this fit and then I could buy all the items if I want to. Um, so we've got the middle slot. Oh, we're going to go with equipment here. It's got some already made fits. I don't really need those hardware. There we go. Come on. Let's go. First thing you always want to do is put on your um, prop mod. So we're going to go afterburner. Now there are better afterburners out there, but I'm going to go the most basic one possible. Uh, I'm not going to really look for prices. These are going to be the pretty low priced items anyway. Um, I know out there that some of these other uh, items here like the compact or the monopropellant are better than the afterburner one, but I just want to go base level, show you what those look like, and then you can build on that. So I'm going to throw that in here. There's my afterburner one. And then I'm going to go, so there's the prop mod. Next thing we have to do is disrupt somebody. Now they've got warp disruptor. Might as well go with it. That is your long range versus a warp scrambler, which is your short range. We're going to go with the disruptor. Disruptor. And warp disruptor one. I'm going to throw that right there. And then we're going to go with a um, stasis web of fire. So, uh, web of fire, just a basic web of fire there. So, um, now that I have these three on here, long story short, we're going to turn those off. Actually, these won't affect a whole lot. That's um, so my navigation. With the afterburner, uh, if you notice here, my top speed with it on, it goes from 480. If I turn the prop mod on and run it, it goes up to 997. So about doubling uh, the speed. Obviously, if your skills are better, it will help that out. Um, so that is, I've now doubled my speed versus a micro warp drive that multiplies it by five. Uh, now, I'm going to open the rest of it. Now, I don't need to really worry about drones. That's no big deal. Targeting, defense, and offense. So we've got all this here. I like to actually like keep an eye over here and see if anything changes. If And the reason why I say that is you might not know what how everything works. So if something... Sometimes something can affect things negatively at the same time that they make things positive. Um, so I'm just turning this on. Nothing there. Oh, and I can give you a great example of that. Well, it'd be a micro warp drive there. Okay. Now I could, what if I went dual prop mod on this puppy? So we got the web of fire there. Notice here that I'm not using that much CPU. Um, show info. Why? Because of the bonus. Propulsion jamming, reduction propulsion jamming systems, activation cost. Okay, so it doesn't really affect that, but it affects how much CPU it takes away whenever it powers it up. Um, good, good, good. Now, <clears throat> it was talking about an overdrive injector and a nanofiber internal structure. So let's go overdrive. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you can get, yeah, you can get these in the, uh, you get these for free if you do the career missions. And then we're gonna go the uh, nanofiber internal striver. Nanofiber internal structure. 
So what do these do? Let's just pull it up here. Your overdrive injector is a monster unit, vastly increases the engine power and at the expense of cargo space. Remember how I was saying something can give you a bonus, but take something away? Sometimes you don't need that thing that's taken away. You're flying a tackle ship here. Your cargo space doesn't matter. Okay, so the fact that it's increasing your speed um, decreases your uh, cargo space doesn't hurt you at all. Now, when I put that on, did you notice something changed over in my top speed? I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. So um, my navigation right now, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn these off. So this is just them being on the ship. My regular speed is um, 517. If I turn this on, it jumps up to 566. With my afterburner on, it goes up to 1176. So remember, it was at 980, so I've increased my, by throwing on this overdrive injector, um, it increases my afterburner speed as well as my regular speed, uh, and it gets me up another 200 meters per second which is awesome. I've done some videos on uh, transversals and trying to stay speed tanking. Uh, please look those up. Not You don't have to look up mine. Just look up speed tanking if you don't know much about it. It um, can really, really help you if you don't know it very well. It's one of the more basic things that are out there, So, but it's a little bit hard to explain. It would take a thousand years. Uh, nanofiber internal structures. Notice something there? So your nanofiber internal structure also helps you. Um, and what does it do? It replaces some of the heavier structure units that are lighter. Um, so it replaces your steel with balsa wood. Uh, <laughs> but more fragile material increases your ship velocity and improves maneuverability at the expense of hull strength. So um, it increases your, your speed and your turning ability while lowering your hull strength. Um, so if you do get hit, you're going to get blown up faster. So this is why I didn't go with the damage control, um, since I'm limited to two instead of three, um, because, uh, I'm basically making this guy to be a speed tank. And if it does get hit, it gets hit. There's no getting around it. So we can go ahead and turn that off there. So this is, this is, this is the fit. This is literally the fit that you need to be a tackler. Now, are there other things you could throw in here? Yeah, uh, you could throw in some rigs. You could upgrade the stuff. You could throw in some guns um, to do a little bit of damage. You might want to throw in one gun so you can at least get on the kill board if that guy dies. Or actually, it would be a missile um, because this is a missile ship. Um, you could throw in a fourth slot here. This mid slot here gives you an option. I might say something in the next video as I might do some research, see what I think might go in there. Um, but yeah, and look at this. To be an effective fleet member will cost you less than a million ISK. And you can get a million ISK by doing two career missions um, or uh, just asking somebody for it. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Run some distribution missions. You can get a million isk in about five seconds. So, um, and be bored out of your skin. Um, or you could mine and be even more bored. Sorry, sorry miners. Um, so yeah, that is tackling basics number two. Uh, I can take this ship out and uh, maybe maybe I'll throw that in. Next video, maybe I'll, oops. Oh shoot, I didn't, I, this is just a simulation. I need to buy this stuff, don't I? Are you sure you want to continue? No. So um, since I'm here, we're going to save this as my uh, David's Goliath. We're going to save it as Condor um, Basic Tackle, just so I've got it. Save. Now, did you see something there with this screen? I can come in here and I can say, buy all of these. So I've got these five here. I can buy all these items in um, the station. Now, if you're getting something more expensive, uh, like a better ship, sometimes this isn't the smartest thing to do. But since it is such a cheap ship, we're going to find out how much all this stuff costs. Okay. 
So all this is going to end up costing me, oh, I don't need the frigate. I do that all the time. These five modules are going to cost me 167,000 ISK. Yeah, why not? Let's buy it all. Um, and it's going to come from the current station. That's why I went to a trade hub. Let me go ahead and buy that. And then I just bought it. Now I can fit it. And now I have my, my cool looking blue uh, ship ready to roll, ready to go, to go tackle somebody for this weekend. Hopefully Sunday or Monday I'll just join into a fleet to get myself blown up. I haven't been blown up in a little while. Um, and if you guys are running any fleets where you want a tackle guy, I am there for you. Let me know, um, depending on the time. Um, but yeah, that's about it for today. Boy, I can't really, there were so many things I, I wanted to talk about and, but it's a matter of, are they the, this is the right time to bring them up with things? Uh, or have I fully fleshed them out in my mind, which never really happens, but, uh, yeah, thanks so much for your comments today. I've been trying to get back to everybody as quickly as possible. Um, also the guys in the discord channel, great to see you there. And, uh, uh, if you have any questions or ideas, please feel free to uh, get in touch with me. Um, the one thing I do like about the Discord channel is I've created a couple different areas in there that if you have a specific question, um, other people can reply if I'm not there already. Uh, but in the comment section here, I try to stay away from reading comment sections. Sometimes it gets too negative. I try to keep my comment section pretty clean of that. Um, but yeah. Thanks so much uh, for the rigs. I got to check those out and get that contract. Appreciate it. Um, the uh, rig blueprints. Um, and I'll shoot you a mail. Um, but other than that's all I got. So I kind of don't want to end this video. This has been kind of fun. You know? All right. Well, hey, fly safe, fly dangerously, fly however that you want. You guys have a great night. And I will talk to you again soon.